Greetings everyone. Uh, we are going to read a story by Ruskin Bond. Its name is Whispering in the Dark. A wild night, wind moaning, trees lashing themselves in a frenzy, rain spurting up from the road, thunder over the mountains, loneliness stretched ahead of me. A loneliness of the heart as well as the physical loneliness. The word was blotted out by a mist that had come up from the valley. A thick white clammy shroud. I groped through the forest, groped in my mind for the memory of a mountain path. Some remembered rock or ancient dodar. Then a streak of blue lightning gave me a glimpse of a barren hillside and a house cradled in mist. It was an old word house, built of limestone rock on the outskirts of a crumbling hill station. There was no light in its windows. Probably the electricity had been disconnected long ago. But if I could get in, it would do for the night. I had no torch, but at times the moon shone through the wild clouds and trees loomed out of the mist like primeval giants. I reached the front door and found it locked from within, walked round to the side and broke down a window pane, put my hand through shattered glass and found the bolt. The window warped by over a hundred monsoons, resisted at first. When it yielded, I climbed into the mustiness of a long closed room, and the wind came in with me, scattering papers across the floor and knocking some unidentifiable object off a table. I closed the window, bolted it again, but the mist crawled through the broken glass and the wind rattled in it like a pair of castanets. There were matches in my pocket. I struck three before a light flared up. I was in a large room crowded with furniture, pictures on the walls, vases on the mantelpiece, a candle stand and, strangely enough, no cobwebs. For all its external look of neglect and dilapidation, the house had been cared for by someone. But before I could notice anything else, the match burned out. As I stepped further into the room, the old deodar flooring creaked beneath my weight. By the light of another match, I reached the mantelpiece and lit the candle, noticing at the same time that the candlestick was a genuine antique with cut glass hangings. A deserted cottage with good furniture and glass. I wondered why no one had ever broken in, and then realized that I had just done so. I held the candlestick high and glanced round the room. The walls were hung with several watercolors and portraits in oils. There was no dust anywhere, but no one answered my call. No one responded to my hesitant knocking. It was as though the occupants of the house were in hiding, watching me obliquely from dark corners and chimneys. I entered a bedroom and found myself facing a full-length mirror. My reflection stared back at me as though I were a stranger, as though it belonged to the house, while I was only an outsider. As I turned from the mirror, I thought I saw someone, something, some reflection other than mine, move behind me in the mirror. I caught a glimpse of whiteness, a pale oval face, burning eyes, long tresses, 
golden in the candlelight but when i looked in the mirror again there was nothing to be seen but my own pallid face a pool of water was foaming at my feet i set the candle down on a small table found the edge of the bed a large old four poster sat down and removed my soggy shoes and socks then i took off my clothes and hung them over the back of a chair i stood naked in the darkness shivering a little there was no one to see me and yet i felt oddly exposed almost as though i had stripped in a room full of curious people i got under the bed clothes this smelt slightly of eucalyptus and lavender but found there was no pillow that was odd a perfectly made bed but no pillow i was too tired to hunt for one so i blew out the candle and the darkness closed in around me and the whispering began the whispering began as soon as i closed my eyes i couldn't tell where it came from it was all around me mingling with the sound of the wind coughing in the chimney the stretching of old furniture the weeping of trees outside in the rain sometimes i could hear what was being said the words came from a distance a distance not so much of space as of time mine mine he's all mine he's ours dear ours whispers echoes words hovering around me with bats wings saying the most inconsequential things with a logical urgency you're late for supper he lost his way in the mist do you think he has any money to kill a turtle you must first tie its legs to posts we could tie him to the bed and pour boiling water down his throat no it's simpler this way i sat up most of the whispering had been distant impersonal but this last remark had sounded horribly near i relit the candle and the voices stopped i got up and prowled around the room vainly looking for some explanation for the voices once again i found myself facing the mirror staring at my own reflection and the reflection of that other person the girl with the golden hair and shining eyes and this time she held a pillow in her hands she was standing behind me i remembered then the stories i had heard as a boy of two spinster sisters one beautiful one plain who lured rich elderly gentlemen into their boarding house and suffocated them in the night the deaths had appeared quite natural and they had got away with it for years it was only the surviving sister's death bed confession that had revealed the truth and even then no one had believed her but that had been many many years ago and the house had long since fallen down when i turned from the mirror there was no one behind me i looked again and the reflection had gone i crawled back into the bed and put the candle out and i slept and dreamt or was i awake and did it really happen i dreamt that the women i had seen in the mirror stood beside the bed leaned over me looked at me with eyes flecked by orange flames i saw people moving in those eyes i saw myself and then her lips touched mine lips so cold so dry 
that a shudder ran through my body. And then, while her face became faceless and only the eyes remained, something else continued to press down upon me. Something soft, heavy and shapeless, enclosing me in a suffocating embrace. I could not turn my head or open my mouth. I could not breathe. I raised my hands and clutched feebly at the thing on top of me. And to my surprise, it came away. It was only a pillow that had somehow fallen over my face, half suffocating me while I dreamt of a phantom kiss. I flung the pillow aside. I flung the bedclothes from me. I had enough of whispering, of all honorless reflections, of pillows, and that fell on me in the dark. I would brave the storm outside rather than continue to seek rest in this tortured house. I dressed quickly. The candle had almost cutted out. The house and everything in it belonged to the darkness of another time. I belonged to the light of day. I was ready to leave. I avoided the tall mirror with the Trotsk Roboco design. Holding the candlestick before me, I moved consciously into the front room. The pictures on the wall sprang to life. One, in particular, held my attention, and I moved closer to examine it more carefully by the light of the dwindling candle. Was it just my imagination, or was the girl in the portrait the woman of my dream? The beautiful pale reflection in the mirror? Had I gone back in time? Or had time caught up with me? Is it time that's passing by? Or is it you and I? I turned to leave. And the candle gave one final sputter and went out. Plunging the room in darkness. I stood still for a moment trying to collect my thoughts to still the panic that came rushing upon me. Just then, there was a knocking on the door. Who's there? I called. Silence. And then, again, the knocking and this time a voice, low and insistent. Please let me in. Please let me in. I stepped forward, unbolted the door, and flung it open. She stood outside in the rain. Not the pale, beautiful one, but a wizened old hag with bloodless lips and flaring nostrils and... But where were the eyes? No eyes? No eyes? She swept past me on the wind and at the same time I took advantage of the open doorway to run outside. To run gratefully into the pouring rain, to be lost for hours among the dripping tears, to be glad of the leeches clinging to my flesh. And when, with the dawn, I found my way at last, I rejoiced in bird song and the sunlight piercing scattering clouds. And today, if you were to ask me if the old house is still there or not, I would not be able to tell you, for the simple reason that I haven't the slightest desire to go looking for it.